Hello, believers, non-believers, and everyone in between. You're listening to Paranormal Stories with Sapphire, a podcast collaboration between Grand Rapids Public Library and me, Sapphire Sandalo, from Stories with Sapphire, Something Scary, and Paranormal Caught on Camera. Now get cozy and open your minds, because it's story time. The Sound in the Distance by Sapphire Sandalo and Adam Sinker The house is quiet and dark, as most houses at midnight are. The occasional car engine passes by, the soft chorus of crickets singing outside. On the couch are three sleeping bodies, one significantly smaller than the other two, all piled on top of each other in front of the TV softly breathing. A note made out to Ruby, listing some phone numbers, lies on the coffee table. The quiet is seared by a loud, high-pitched noise from outside. A bird call, perhaps? The smallest body sits up, eyes darting around, looking for the source. Sissy, she says, patting her small hands on the young teen's stomach next to her, Ruby. Ruby doesn't move. Sissy! The small girl hits her harder. Ruby sits up, groggy. Ow! What, Zena? We have to go. Yes, we have to go back to sleep. Tina brings her face closer to her sister's. I heard it. Ruby's eyes are now fully open. She turns her head towards Tina. No, you didn't. I'm sure it was a bird. No, it wasn't. Ruby stares at her little sister. How loud was it? Really loud. Good, then it's far away and we don't have to worry about it, do we? No, we have to go. The other body underneath them all begins to stir. He stretches his arms and shifts. Mm, What's going on, babe? Nothing, Mark. Tina's just being annoying. Tina jumps off the couch and over to her purple backpack in the corner of the room. She loops her arms through and heads to the door to put her shoes on. Where do you think you're going? Mark calls out to Tina. Mom said if I heard it, you have to take me to Lola's right away. What did you hear? Mark asks. Tina's face furrows into a scowl. The monster. Mark turns to Ruby. Okay, what have you been telling her, babe? It's not my fault, Ruby says, defensively. It's this dumb story our mom told us when we were little. Well, when I was little. There's this creature that supposedly flies around at night looking for pregnant people so they could eat their fetuses. And little kids, Tina interjects. But it was just a stupid story she made up to keep us inside at night. Mark looks away. His brow twitches. Um, I've heard that story, too, he confesses, and it's not just a story. Ruby looks at him incredulously. In the years they've been together, he'd never mentioned this or even hinted that he believed in anything paranormal. But she knew him well enough to know when he was lying. This was not one of those times. As Ruby sits there, trying to come up with what to say next, the familiar bird call echoes from outside again. All three of them freeze. Ruby slowly turns to Tina. Was that louder or softer than what you heard before? She whispers. Tina swallows nervously. Softer. Without saying another word, Ruby and Mark grab their coats, shoes, and keys. The three of them exit the front door. The car is about 25 feet from where they stand, a distance that feels longer than the vulnerability of the dark night. Mark picks up Tina in his arms as they all scurry quickly and quietly to the car. Ruby turns the car on while Mark huddles with Tina in the back. Tina fishes through her backpack and pulls out three garlands made of garlic. She places one around her neck 
hands one to Mark, and places one around Ruby. She immediately gags. Oh, wow, that's strong. I can't drive and wear that, Ruby says. Here, wear mine. You'll have double protection. On any other day, their Lola's house would have taken about 20 minutes to get to. But tonight, Ruby was speeding down the empty streets, and they arrive in 10. She parks the car right next to the front door, and they all hurriedly rush into the house where their Lola was already waiting for them. Ruby is the last to enter, and as she shuts the door, she hears the loud bird call. It sounds much farther than before. She slams the door shut. Lola leads them to the bedroom and instructs Mark to place Tina on the bed. She then grabs a bowl of salt, sprinkles a circle around the bed, and begins to chant a prayer. Mark and Ruby nervously watch from the doorway. When Lola is finished, she gives Mark and Ruby a knowing nod, and they head to the living room, where Lola had already prepared sheets and pillows for them to sleep. The couch was much too small for the both of them, so Mark lay on the love seat. Exhausted from the night's events, he immediately knocks out and drools on the pillow. Ruby giggles to herself and gets comfortable on the couch. It's even quieter where her Lola lives. No cars passing by, no crickets singing outside. With the curtains closed, the room is almost pitch black. Ruby closes her eyes. A bowl of oil on the windowsill begins to bubble. A faint bird call rings out from outside. Ruby feels the end of the couch jostle a bit. Mark, is that you? No answer. Ruby sits up, staring into the darkness in front of her. The cushion of the couch sinks beneath her leg. She leans forward. Her face is met with a pair of eyes that light up the dark room. Before Ruby even has a chance to process what she's seeing, a large round mouth with rows of dagger-like teeth open wide to reveal a long, skinny tongue. It shoots into Ruby's body through her belly button and pulls out a small, wet, red mass and gobbles it down whole. The quiet of the house now echoes with Ruby's last shriek. Thank you to the Grand Rapids Public Library and Librarians. Visit grpl.org to learn more about how this 21st century library inspires opportunity, connection, and innovation. If you enjoyed this story, you might also enjoy my podcast, Stories with Sapphire, available wherever you listen to your favorite shows. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Awkward Sapphire. Salamat and good night.